I'm very excited for another of our Bird of the Month installments. Uh, we've, we've talked on Bird of the Month before about some of the birds that we're seeing in spring and summer and even uh, during the non-breeding season. Well, now it's, it's late August here in Eastern Kentucky. Well, I guess it's late August uh, just about everywhere right now. Uh, <clears throat> but here in Eastern Kentucky, we're starting to see some, some different patterns from our birds. And uh, we're going to dive into what a few of those are. Just, just a, a couple that you might see in your backyard and in your woods and, and uh, what you might see and what they might mean. So we'll dive right into it, to some late summer bird observations that you might see. So for most of our uh, bird species, this time of year is one in which we're seeing the end of the breeding cycle for many species. So here we've got some mallards. Uh, these are the birds that have finished their breeding. Uh, they might have young with them or they, they may themselves be uh, in uh, the, at the end of breeding condition, finishing up. So uh, let's see, I think I've got a yeah, laser pointer. So this is a male mallard. Uh, he's, he's transitioning from that breeding season color. He's got that green head and that bright uh, chestnut breast into this sort of drab, almost female-like color. This is a male as well here, as is this one in the back. This is a female. Uh, you, can, you can tell the non-breeding male from the female mallard. Uh, the, the easiest way is by looking at the bill. So the male mallard has this kind of like a sort of yellowish bill with no modeling on it. And the female has this orange bill with a like a mottled saddle. But anyway, these birds have finished up all their breeding activity for the year or are in the process of finishing that up. Um, you know, you, you see this with songbirds too. So these are barn swallows here on, the, on their nest. So these are nestlings, but they're soon to be fledglings. Um, so these are old birds. They're still being cared for by their parents, but they're, they're able to fly. They're able to probably do a little bit of foraging for themselves. We're getting toward the end of the breeding cycle for a lot of these birds. So you're seeing a lot of this kind of thing. The other thing that we're seeing a lot of are juveniles. So we've talked about this on Bird of the Month before. This is a, a juvenile American robin. So we've got that sort of rusty colored breast and flanks that we're used to on a robin. But we've got wing bars. We've got weird spots all over the breast and the back and the face kind of looks funny. So you've got a lot of this juvenile uh, appearance, or sometimes fledglings that are still dependent on their parents. Here's a juvenile northern cardinal. It looks very similar to the female, but we've got this like very dark bill. The adult female cardinal has a bright red or a bright orange bill, really. So uh, we've got a lot of these weird birds. Here's a red-bellied woodpecker, a nice adult male, and then we've got this goofy little fledgling. Doesn't have any red on him at all. Uh, or her um, begging for food from dad here. So you see a lot of that kind of thing. The other thing you see is just birds that just look rough. So this is a, this is a juvenile Carolina wren here. You can see its feathers just look real nasty. It's, it's got, you can tell it's a, a juvenile. It's still got a little bit of a pale, uh, they, they call this area the gape, this sort of area where the, the opening of the mouth is. I um, mean, a lot of juvenile birds have like a pale gape. You can see just just looks rough. He's got that that fledgling uh, plumage, that juvenile plumage that is very um, low quality. So we see a lot of that time of year. Now, <clears throat> this is the breeding cycle of the American robin here, and and I'm showing you this um, for a reason. I know it says American goldfinch at the top here, but bear with me. And I, now, this figure is really confusing, so let me get rid of some of the noise. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna focus on these two sort of lines. You can kind of think of them as the same. This is the day of the year, or the month of the year rather. So January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. And these lines correlate or correspond to when the robin is going to have eggs and when it's gonna have young. So you can see American robin, which is a migratory bird, uh, starts their reproduction in April. We usually just have eggs in the beginning of April and toward the end of April, we're getting young. And that goes through May, June, July, and through August. So we're seeing the last of our birds that are still uh, uh, being raised for the year. Well, one bird that I often think of in terms of late summer is the American goldfinch. And the reason I think of the American goldfinch, so this is the same figure. Uh, these, are, these are birds of North America figures, by the way, or birds of the world, as it's called now. 
Um, and same figure for the goldfinch. So let's kind of get rid of the non-breeding and migration and so forth. And look at the, the reproductive period for the American goldfinch. Absolutely incredible. So April, when all of our robins are breeding, absolutely no breeding. May, very unlikely. Even June, really, there's not that much breeding activity for American goldfinch. Really unusual in terms of our birds. The, the robin is, a, is pretty typical in that case, but the goldfinch is very late breeder. So that's one of the reasons why I think of American goldfinches of late summer. So beyond that, the American goldfinch, the, if you feed birds in your yard at all, you know they love thistle seeds. So here's a, an American goldfinch feeding on thistle seed. And <clears throat> it, it's a really interesting life history. Here's the female American goldfinch. She's in the breeding season. She's relatively brightly colored, although I mean the back and some of the flanks kind of this greenish color. Yellow overall though, these, these dark gray wings with white wing bars and white edges on the primaries and secondaries. And this sort of uh, orangey beak with a dark tip. That's typical of the adult female. And the adult male has got that bright flashy coloration to him. He's got very bright yellow, bold black wings with white markings and that black forehead. Only the male has the black forehead. So these are our breeding American goldfinch. They produce a ton of vocalizations. Probably uh, a couple of the best known are the, uh, the potato chip called the potato chip or perchicory. I, I learned it as potato chip. They also do a, a nasally baby call. And the male, when he gets really excited and does his song, it's this really complex series of notes where they often mix in the baby and the perchicory potato chip call all jumbled together. So these are your adult American goldfinches that you see around. But really the thing that I hear the most, juvenile and fledgling American goldfinches. You can see they kind of have the color palette of the female, but with a lot less yellow, very drab, and they have a dark bill, unlike the adults that have the orange and the dark tip. Well, they are just very noisy. So what you see here on the left is a mother American goldfinch being bombarded by three of her little fledglings and both fledglings and juveniles produce this chickpea call and they produce it constantly. It's one of the, the sounds of the end of summer in terms of birds in my mind. So here's that chickpea call. So listen for the American goldfinch, the adults, and the uh, juveniles this time of year. So beyond that, many birds, the American goldfinch included, are going into their pre-basic molt, or their, you can think of this as their non-breeding molt. So this is the molt that they do in spring that I'm showing here. Well, think of that in reverse as the pre-basic molt. So this is the really beautiful summer breeding male goldfinch on the right. Well, they're actually finishing up their breeding in, at the end of August and September, and they're transitioning back to this drab color. So the male loses his black forehead. He loses most of his yellow. Um, he keeps the black and white contrasting colors on his wings, so you can actually still tell the male and female apart, and he keeps some of that yellow on the, on the front of his shoulder, but he keeps that kind of hidden there. So um, a lot of birds are undergoing this, this non-breeding, or it's the fancy term is the pre-basic molt. <clears throat> now, this is not just restricted to goldfinches, of course. All birds essentially are undergoing. And one thing that startles people is you see cardinals like this that have almost no feathers on their head, and I won't lie, it's a pretty uh, unattractive look for an otherwise beautiful bird. Um, and it's not only cardinals you see doing this, you get blue jays that'll undergo this really awful molt. Um, and you'll think I'm making this up, it sounds ridiculous, but the term for this is a catastrophic molt. <laughs> and the catastrophic molt is really common in blue jays and cardinals, especially this time of year. But don't worry, it only lasts a few days or maybe a couple weeks at most. So here's some blue jay on the left, and eventually those feathers start to, 
to grow in. He's not looking a whole lot better there. All right, here, you, you know, give him some time. He's starting to grow in those feathers and a little bit more time and eventually he'll look as good as new or better than new. Now, the other thing that you're seeing a lot this time of year is pre-migration fat storage. So here's a kind of a cartoon skeleton. I think this is supposed to be a, a pigeon. Um, and the reason I have this on here is it's helpful to know where birds are storing a lot of their fat. So if you're a dove hunter or you're hunting any kind of bird and get the chance to look at a bird up close, the areas you're looking for fat are here in the furculum, the wishbone area, and then uh, this, so this is the rib cage, and then this is the, the pelvis here. So all the bird's organs are kind of in this sort of cavity. So birds also store a lot of fat uh, here kind of along the abdomen. So those are two big areas where you see it. And I'm gonna show you next a picture of a bird that's, that's you can't really see its head very well, but it's, it's flipped up uh, with its belly kind of pointed toward the camera and someone is blowing air onto its, onto its abdomen and its breast, and you can see the subcutaneous fat. So here's the breast uh, bone and then breast muscle, this reddish color, and then these kind of yellowy tan areas. These are fat. Uh, this is in the furculum and the wishbone, and then this is the abdomen. So here's a crudely drawn head and tail to kind of imagine how this bird is laid out. Its head is kind of hidden like its, its head is up there, you can't really see it. So, uh, but yeah, you can see that the, the bird's translucent skin, you can see where these birds are, are storing fat. So this time of year, a lot of birds, your goldfinches and cardinals and all your little warblers and wrens, these little guys are, are, are consuming as much food as they can to store up some fat for migration. Another thing you see a lot of are, are flocking behaviors. So here's a flock of grackles. I just noticed there's a European starling hiding out in the back. They're not actually blackbirds, but they, they tend to hang out with blackbirds even though they're not native. Uh, here's a flock of red-winged blackbirds. They're forming, a, 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 this looks like mostly red-winged blackbirds. And here's a mixed species flock. Uh, looks like red-winged blackbirds. There's some starlings in there. I think you could probably find a cowbird or two if you looked hard enough. Uh, but you see these big mixed species flocks, grackles and, car, uh, and uh, starlings and all these birds. All these birds. And the last thing that we start to see in, in August uh, of note is actual migration. A lot of birds are beginning their migration. Uh, today here on campus I saw a yellow warbler. Uh, looking very similar to the one on the left, getting ready for its southward migration. And, and of course, all of our birds are getting ready, at least all of our migratory birds are gearing up to migrate sooner rather than later. Um, I have this bird here on the left. It's not much to look at, and they don't breed here, uh, but they do travel through Kentucky, and this is called the Swainson's Thrush. And the reason I bring attention to the Swainson's Thrush, it's a really fun one to hear. So these birds are migrating at night in the dark, and if you go out really early in the morning, like just before sunrise, it's still kind of dark. You can hear you can hear a ton of these birds starting to migrate. If you just listen, you'll hear the little birds calling up in the sky. But but one that you hear a lot because they're really abundant in fall and they make a lot of noise is the Swainson's thrush. If you're familiar with the frog called a spring peeper that makes that peep call early in spring, well, the, the Swainson's thrush does a very similar peep uh, at nighttime in the fall. So go out in the early morning uh, or even after dark, you know, just after sunset and listen for this, this peep call that the Swainson's thrush produces. Well, anyway, I think that's all I have for you for today. Uh, looking forward to next month's Bird of the Month. And in the meantime, uh, happy bird.